our God has blessed us to be here one more time. I believe. I that song that Brother Andy sang, I believe. There's a place called heaven. I believe that one day after a while, you got Jesus on your side. Me and this whole world will go to a place where we're going to be peace and joy and happiness for every morning. So many things I have to your mind, and I said, I'm not a lesson, and I'm a blessing, but just going to hear what I'm really going to do. Anyway, the preaching on, I'm trying to leave. And I can tell you this, repentance is required at the hands of everyone. And, and I knew that one day, I knew, I knew that I was lost and I was going down to the end of the world. I knew that I needed to repent, I needed Jesus in my life above everything. And I began to seek out for the cease one. I began to pray. I, I, I began to get down on my knees and try to, wherever I was at, the Lord would uh, give me the opportunity, I would. And so many times I said this, I don't have the equipment. I would try to find an excuse for Brother Jerry to back over next to the trees and I'd get off that door and I'd get down on my knees. Lord, don't let me die off. I knew. And uh, they knocked at the heart's door and I kept seeking eyes to him. <coughs> Got on my knees and praying, and I'll try to sing this song here, man. But I got on my knees and praying, and I'm asking God to come into my life and not to let me die alone. You know, the most greatest thing was, those well, sins which are many, I'm free to give, but he had to have commandments. But he says, go home. Yeah. You go home and tell thy friends the good things that the Lord has done for you. And, cool. and I did. I stepped out, and I went to church house. Bowed my head and prayed, and the next thing I know, didn't feel worthy. Didn't feel worthy. That didn't even take me up on CJ, but you know, the table friend on the other side. You know, people may think, well, the church don't pray or do anything, Brother Randy. I pray that God sends people here. I pray God will send lost people that we might could say something that would persuade them. Take their life for them. One so. Just to be able to stand up and say something, and one soul would turn to life. BJ would be worth it all for them to miss hell. And then he's preaching, and he's, you know, they're preaching about life, and he believes that they're there. The rich man, he died. He, he knew where he was at. He died there in hell. He lifted up his eyes. He knew. And I told my wife the other day, we got to talking about that. He knew that he was there. Do you know where are you going to go to that spirit? We belong to Jesus. We will go back to the Father who gave it. And I thank God that my spirit inside of me, whenever I have to lay down this walk of life, he gave. It will go to a place of comfort where everything will be peace and joy and happiness forevermore. But you know the rich man, you know, when you look back, when you look back at him and you think about it, he had five brothers. I believe the Bible says he had five brothers here, still here, Jerry. Yeah. And he wanted Lazarus. Well, you're going to let him go back to one of my five brothers. Come not on, to man. come to this awful place. And that's why we're here this evening. We want to warn men and women not to go to that awful place. We want you to get Jesus on your side and have a life everlasting when you leave this world. Now, can you picture him? Him there, Brother Randy, been tormented in a flame, but that wasn't the end of it all. In the resurrection morning, what you preached about, the ones that will come up and be going to heaven, but the ones that will be resurrected is going to be cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible teaches me the smoke of their torment, Brother. A Cecil will send that forever and forever. And so many times I thought about that, Randy. So many times I thought about the torment they will send that forever and ever. Right? So that means somebody is being there tormenting. Right. Hell, this thing that you get put in there and you burn up and that's it. You're you want to go there. Right? Hell is going to be eternal today. That right? same as heaven. Amen. You know, without Jesus today, I wouldn't want to go home. I don't remember about an old preaching brother. And I know a lot of them remember. Oh, Brother Louis must see. He was a witness to me. And Brother Randy, he told me one evening as we got off work, he said, if I didn't have Jesus in my life, brother, 
I say so. He said, I want to leave the heel here in this thing there. And today I got him there. You know what it is today? If you got, you got Jesus, you don't have life. But if you got Jesus, you've got it all today. Faith and love. I thank God. And Brother CJ, that a boy we ever loved. Yeah. Makes no difference what men and women may say about me. What they might do to me. What they may fall to accuse me of. I still serve a God that's going to be able to take me somewhere, Brother BJ. And I thank God we're going to go to a world that you don't have to worry about. There won't be no deaf people there. There won't be no blind people there. We won't have to worry about having a kidney transplant, BJ. We'll be in a world of everything. I mean, peace and joy and happiness forevermore. You know, I think about my blessed companion, just like I told him today. You know, see, we ain't got much longer here, but the most reward thing about it is, people, we got a better place to go to, whatever the Lord called. We got a better home awaiting in the morning. I know it won't be husband and wife over there, but what joy it's going to be to be there together, Brother Jerry. What joy it is to have God down in your life. People try. People try to tear you down every way they can. Let me quick that. The devil tries to tear you down every way he can. Yeah. Things will come up on your life. But to me, he promised us, if we just love and serve him, Brother Cecil, he'll take us to a world. Again, people will fall to accuse you of things. But I thank God. He knows it all. He knows you hard. He knows where you stand at today. He said, I'll never... I'll never leave you. That's a great consolation today. He said, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. He'll go all the way with you, even to the end of the world. But today I feel a bit like this, Brother Jerry. But I die and have to be buried away from this old world. I believe they'll be part of him right there with me. He's been waiting for that resurrection morning. What a joy it's going to be. They may hide us away for just a little while. I think about what Brother Randy said, what he preached about. I preached about the resurrection on that resurrection morning. What a joy it's going to be. May plant this old body. We stopped him the other day. I'm seeing him dig that grave. Just a little bit of black dirt right now, Brother Cecil. And I read in the Bible the other day what it talked about. The old prophet, when he told him to prophesy to the bones there, Brother Randy. Do you believe that they'll live again today? I believe that you got the Lord in your life. And that resurrection morning, you're going to live. But you know the sad part about it is, if you die without the Lord, you're still going to live. But you're going to live in a world you don't want to be in. I don't want to be in that world where everything is peace and joy and happiness. But you begin to prophesy to them bones. The bones come back together. I seen you come up on them. They more or less made the body back. And that green and blue, they give them life back. Like Brother Jerry said when he preached about the walls of Jericho. Have you ever thought about that when you hung that little thread in that winter? What did you know what my thought was? When you, and when he said that, no, she knew when they come, they, they wouldn't want to destroy her. Can you imagine having that room there, Brother Jerry? I know you would have got your son. You got your daughter-in-law. You got all your family ready. You got to have them in that room when their walls fell so they would survive today. But today we try to there tell our families about it. We try to tell them through their assistance. They need Jesus in their life. Yes. They need to get the blood applied to their soul. They need to get the blood applied. And one day after a while, heaven's going to be their home when they leave this old world. I'm so thankful that God has blessed me the way He's blessed me. He's blessed me above measure. And I give Him the praise of God and honor for that. And what would you give when I was talking about the scarlet thread? If I can, if I could save my son, I'd go home and I'd get him and them little grandkids. And I'd say to my old brother Randy, the next place I'd head, I'd head to rich man to get that little girl. And I'm going to make sure she got in there. Then I'd start with my neighbor's children and my neighbors. I want them to go. To miss that awful place oh, called yeah. hell. But most of all, I want to miss that place of the lake of fire. 
with our smoke of their torment. We'll send that forever and forever. I'm so thankful today that God has blessed us and been able to be out and about. But one day after a while, you know, the last scripture, last verse in the 23rd Psalm, as surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will, brother, stay so the well in the house of the Lord forever. I will. That's on positive terms. And I thought about this song. And when Brother Jerry was singing about little David, I loved that song. When others see a shepherd boy, God may see a king. I'm so glad when others see a little sinner like me, God sees something. He wanted to save my soul. I'm so thankful he come here. But you ever think about all the love of God when you're born again and I never know he's David King. How the love had to be there for David. Even though, even though King Saul, he wanted to kill David. He got after him. He started seeking after him, trying to kill him. But David had the opportunity, Brother Randy. Never sought revenge, did he? He had the opportunity more than one time. He could have took his life, but he wouldn't. He never would. He knew he was God's chosen one. And God had put him there. So today, people talk about you. It makes no difference, Brother Cecil, what you do. People will talk about you. But David, he held up Saul. Could have come down until Saul got killed. And they cut his head off. They slew him and his son. And Jonathan, they killed both of them there. And old King David. I think about this. Sometimes Harry preaches about this a lot. So my city shelf. And I thought about the love that David had. For, where it is for King Saul, Jonathan, and that little one. He didn't want to kill the family. He wanted to bring him into the king's palace. He wished. He wept for him today. That's why we're here today. We don't want to see nobody go down. That's in the world of lost. We want you to see you get Jesus in your life. And let him lead God as you go through life today. What a joy it is that we have one even at the midnight hour. See, make so many things come upon you. God didn't promise it. Today we weren't have heartache. He didn't promise it that people talk about it. He didn't promise it about a lot of different things. But the greatest promise He promised us is we just love and serve Him and take us to a world where we're in peace and joy and happiness. I can use this just in the morning. I'll get out of the way and let the jury come. Just in the morning, my, my sister and I was gone, passed away. But the greatest news, and the, when I got to see the messages from her little granddaughter, Mommy just said bye. She went on over to the glory land. She left this old world, but there's a better reunion coming in the morning. And I thought about her, but she's hugging me today. He always told her, he said, I'll never. Never put you in a nursing home. I'll take care of you all the days of my life. And so many times I said, I really try and think about all that he went through and what he did for that blessed woman. He never put her in a nursing home. He'd just get her out, Brother Randy, and drive her down the road and bring her back home. And I thought, you know, today, what a love that is. What God, what kind of love God puts down in your heart as you serve Him today. He would not put her in a nursing home. He, laid, he kept her out there in the house till she died. What a love. God put in your heart. He'll lead you and guide you along this way. The latest news of it all here. What joy it is to be able to hear she had Jesus in her life when she left this old world. That's the most precious thing today. If you serve God, you pile them stones up. She left a great light shining. Her testimonies, them kids, them grandkids. She left the stones pile up. With the Cecil, she'll just pick them up and follow after Grandma. She'll take them home or pick them up and follow after Grandpa. They'll take them home one day after a while. What a joy it's going to be to be able to be there. So many times I think about Brother Jerry's dad. I'm not trying to think about him and all the old brothers. I thought about about Oh, uh, J. Lee Hamlin's daughter just passed away this week. I thought about him and all the brothers that walked along this way and that they were witnesses to all of them. What joy it is when you can think about the stones they piled up along the way. If we just follow that path, he'll lead us home one day after a while as we walk this way. What joy it is to have that. 
know my mom died when I was just a little buddy boy and they met your brother. But my mom, she lives on. What does she live at? Cecil, she lives right down in here in my heart. She lives over in the glory land today. I can't go up to the cemetery and I don't have to go to the cemetery to get a good feeling about it. Why do you think about her, Lord? She always taught us when we were little bitty boys. Good little boys go to the good place. Bad little boys go to the bad place. She would teach us about Jesus. I'll say this and I'll get out of your way. I always remember the picture Mommy kept. You went into the house, old house, it seemed like when you went into the front door, you split off one way or the other. There's a wall up there. And that picture of Jesus hanging on the wall. Then and I knocking on the door. And a little bitty boy, I didn't understand. There wasn't no doorknob on that door. Didn't really understand what the doorknob meant. But I know today, the doorknob is not on the outside, Brother Cecil. He's knocking on the door for you to open it up and let him come in. I'm so glad today he knocked on my heart's door. I opened that door and asked him to come in. I begged him to come in, Brother Cecil. I was on my knees, a beggar, asking him to save my everlasting soul. I'm so thankful. Go home and tell our friends the good thing that the Lord has done for you. I had to step out. I had to have step out on faith today. I had to repent. I had to step out on faith and believe today that he would. I'm so glad that I was a whosoever that I believed in Him and trusted in Him. Still put my faith and trust in Him. I don't get back home this season to see my blessed wife. I look for to see her in the morning. So if I got home this evening and she lay in that bed, I know where she went to. What joy that is. What peace that is today. And what peace and comfort it is to know. And Jeremiah, he's been really sick lately, but if God was to call him out of this old world, I know where I'll meet him in the morning, Cecil. We go over into the glory land today. Yeah. So please, if you don't have the Lord in your life, you allow the praying before it's everlasting too late. Oh, yeah.